Now, the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ohio Northern University. The best discoveries come from the unexpected. By the Toledo Clinic. Choose well, feel better. By PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. And by Frickers, the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. We are up in Blissfield tonight where the Royals are trying to continue their perfect season. We will get to this game in just a moment. But we start tonight with the only Ohio team remaining in our area playing tonight. Tiffin Columbian. Let's get to those highlights. Division three state final four. The first time the tornadoes have ever been into the state final four. Tornadoes, no, it won't be easy. Taking on the number one team in the state from Chardon. This game played over in Brunswick. Columbian got off to a rough start, down 33-0, but less than two minutes, with less than two minutes in the half, they put it together a good drive here. Braden Rogo to Brody Conley, who gets the first round to keep it alive. And then Rogo to his twin brother, Bryce Rogo. Columbian gets on the board with just seconds left in the first half. But in the second half, it was just too much. A running clock. Chardon's defense never gave Columbian room to breathe. Columbian falls 47-7. Christy Kopanis has more from Brunswick. Jordan, Columbian just ran into the brick wall that is Chardon football tonight. They showed why they've been state ranked all year long, but some positives to take away for the Tornadoes. This is the first time in school history they made it to the state final four, and these seniors that started with Coach Lutz back when they were in eighth grade left a legacy on this program. You know, uh, obviously a season with a ton of adversity, and uh, you know we got a very young team, but a great core of seniors and um, and coaches that were hungry and uh, continue to bounce back, find a way, and uh, you know they accomplished something that our football programs never accomplished. And um, obviously the target on our back continues to grow, and that's uh, you know we play a tough schedule every year, and getting back here is not a given. Just because we have a very young team and some. Guys coming back is not a given, so we wanted to enjoy it. And um, I thought our kids played really, really hard through to the end against a really good team. You know, they're uh, high ranked for a reason. They got 26 seniors on their squad, and it showed. They're physical, um, and they executed at a really high level. The future is bright for the Colombian program. Coach Lutz said nothing is guaranteed, but a lot of young guys on this program that will be back again next year. Reporting tonight, Christy Kopanis, WTOL 11. All right, Christy, thanks so much. Up here in Michigan, let's start with the game that we were at. Blissfield 8-0 welcoming in Clinton, who is 7-1. Blissfield won the first meeting between these two teams earlier this year, but Clinton would come out on fire, hand it off to George Ames. He finds a crease. He is gone. Clinton would take a 13-0 lead into the half. But second half, Blissfield comes storming back, hand it off to Chase Collier, who powers his way into the end zone. Royals down just 13-7. So we go to the fourth quarter. Still a six-point game here. Blissfield would strike again. Gavin Gannon to Zach Horky, a couple future BGSU Falcons in baseball. Hooking up here, the game tied at 13. But the ensuing extra point is blocked by Ames. Just a huge game for him, so the score would stay 13 all. Clinton would get the final look at this thing. They drive all the way down the field, and Jonathan Ball, he becomes a legend at Clinton. A game-winning field goal. Clinton moving on with a 16-13 victory. I mean, we practice it every day in pregame. Just rep it. I rep it down on the field by myself. I trusted my teammates, the blockers, the holder. It was just, it just happened. I mean, it means a lot, and I know my my team appreciates it. But they pushed down the field for me, so I had to do the same for them. Uh, they're just special. They've always been a special group of kids ever since we were in eighth grade. Um, we've been lifting together. This this group of seniors. So working hard, and, and to see this, their dedication, you know, paying off for them. It's special. Division 7 defending state champ Monroe SMCC welcoming in Jackson Lumen Christie. Monroe St. Mary would find themselves in a hole very early in this one. Lumen Christie tailback Nicholas Wilson finds a seam, darts past the Falcon defense, and then shows off his speed, breaking off a huge touchdown run for the Titans. In just a matter of minutes, Monroe St. Mary down 16 to nothing in the first quarter. Then Falcons needing a spark, they would get one right here. Blake Birkenheyer shed some contact. He would get up the field. But SMCC gets inside the 20 and they're in scoring position here. But a few minutes later, the Falcons would mishandle the football. It's on the ground. Lou and Christie would recover, shut down a promising second half drive after the big play. The St. Mary not giving up. This time, 
It's Cole Jandro protecting the football, finding some open space. Jandro with a burst of speed gets the Falcons into the end zone on the board, but it was too little, too late. Monroe St. Mary Catholic Central comes up just short in the district championship. They fall to Jackson Lewin Christie, 22 to six. Yeah, we made a couple of adjustments in the second half, uh, obviously being down 16 nothing, We had a couple shots in the first half. We just didn't finish drives. Um, that put us behind the eight ball. We just weren't in position. We were flying upfield instead of squeezing down. Uh, you know, we just, kids out of position right now. Uh, that's a young team. You know, we are a young team. We were just coming up, getting in lanes, creating seams for them, and they were hitting them. Division eight now, Whiteford, Whiteford and Summerfield. They played just a few weeks ago. Whiteford won a close one tonight. A lot more on the line in the woods. First quarter, Summerfield already up 7-0. Then Devin Albane with a dime up the middle to Ethan Tyler. He's into the end zone. It's 14-0 Bulldogs early. Whiteford, though, would bounce back. Quarterback keeper here in the red zone. Shea Ruddy making a handful of guys miss. He is in. Missed two-point conversion. It's a 14-6 ball game. Go to the second quarter now. This might be the play of the game. Albane drops the snap, manages to get it, rolls right, heaves it deep. It's caught by a wide open Roman Ayat. He won't be stopped. The Bulldogs are up 21 to 6. Then even more this time. Albane with a pump fake. Throws a beautiful pass downfield to Gavin Fetz in stride. Summerfield went to the halftime break up 28 to 14. Go to the third quarter now. Whiteford trying to make it a one-score game here. But Ruddy is picked off at the goal line by Drew Defoe. So Summerfield in business, and then in the fourth quarter, Bulldogs trying to put this one away. Albane with the keeper. He is untouched. Summerfield, a third consecutive playoff upset. They beat White for 34-14, and John Monk has more. Jordan, if you would have come to this game with absolutely no prior knowledge of either of these teams, you probably would have been surprised to know that Summerfield, even this deep into the playoffs, has a losing record in the last time these two teams played. Whiteford won 34 to 29, but Summerfield came out shot out of a cannon in the first half with a dynamic offense and then a staunch defense in the second half, holding off Whiteford and winning the district championship 34 to 14. Every time there was an opportunity, it bounced against us and didn't, didn't go in our favor. And uh, it was a big game. We got a lot of young kids, so I think that might be part of it. It's the first time that they had that big moment, and uh, we'll grow from it. The past three games, um, we've been the underdogs, and we end up just blowing them out. So it's a great feeling to be the underdog and come out on top. I'll tell you what, um, past three weeks, I've been coaching around football for a long time. These guys are really feeling themselves right now. It's great to be a part of and uh, just keep it rolling. It's, it's all on the kids. Reporting from Whiteford, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11. John, thanks. Division 8 here as well. Sand Creek making the trip over to Addison. Aggies, winners of three straight. A good start for Sand Creek. First drive of the game, Will Alexander would keep it, finds a hole. He is off to the races, takes it 41 yards for the score. Two-point conversion is good. It's 8 nothing Aggies. Next drive for Sand Creek. Aggies on the move. This time, Alexander finds Brody Saren on a little pop pass. Breaks a shoestring tackle. The big man rumbles in from 31 yards out. Aggies extend their lead to 14-0. Sand Creek now up 14-6. Check out this play from Alexander. Drops back the pass. Can't find anyone. So he takes off. Makes a great cut back upfield. Show off the speed. 43-yard score. And Sand Creek would win it 36-32. All right, time for our first break here on Charlie's Hodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. When we come back, we're looking ahead to an action-packed Saturday across Ohio. Hot Seagull Football is playing in the state final four against one of the true powerhouse programs in all of Ohio. We'll have a preview of that game coming up next.